Okay guys, in this video I will discuss about the transportation analysis of a pipe rack module and what are the design criteria or different aspect you need to remember whenever you are going to design any pipe rack module for transportation analysis. Okay, so if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay, so let's start. So before diving into the transportation analysis directly, I just need to recap the basic design criteria that you need to remember whenever you are going to design any pipe pipe module okay so what are the different type of loading that you need to consider when you are designing this particular pipe pipe module well just consider this particular beam so what are the different type of loading coming to this beam well it have some self weight itself okay well this pipe will have some empty load and also in operating condition this pipe will have some operating load not only that based on the supporting condition of this pipe you will also have some friction load during operating condition okay so based on all of these things you can design this particular beam and based on this support condition if we consider this support and these are let's say fixed support or these are moment connected support in that case if this is the beam in each and every load condition the load is actually being applied like this okay so the load is acting vertically downward okay and in this type of loading condition what is the bending moment diagram of this particular fixed beam well it is something like this you will have some hogging bending moment at the support and some sagging bending moment at the span okay so in this region what will happen the beam will have tension at top and compression at bottom okay but in this particular sagging zone here you will have just the reverse of this that means tension at bottom but compression at top so based on this thing you will have to design this particular beam of this pipe rack module and it is valid for all the beams i'm not discussing further detail okay now what will happen let's say you have already completed your design now this uh, pipe rack module is ready for transportation in that case what are you thinking is there any changes that you need to incorporate in design aspect of this beam well let's try to understand okay so this is the basic diagram or this is the actual diagram whenever your pipe track module is going to be transported from one location to the other location or the fabricating shop to the actual site okay so here you can see that uh, this pipe rack module is being transported by this trailer and here you can see actually this pipe rack is being seated over this particular trailer and these are the trailer beam okay and the whole load or the overall empty weight of this pipe rack module is being carried by this particular beam only at these two location is there any confusion okay so the whole pipe rack module is being transported by this trailer and for this transportation purpose the pipe rack module has been kept over this beam only or you can say this beam is now carrying all the dead weight or the empty weight of this pipe rack module so in this diagram if we incorporate this particular load that is being applied like this okay this is one location and this is another location this is now actually acting as the supporting location of this pipe rack module these are not acting as support because it is need to be transported so in addition to all this vertical load in this beam from the bottom you will have a huge concentrated point load because of this support okay so now let's try to understand different behavior of this particular beam under this concentrated support okay so these are the support reaction coming from the trailer beam okay and due to this support reaction 
what will happen to this particular beam well this beam is actually fixed end okay like this and initially you will have some load like this acting downward and based on this loading condition you have already designed your beam and it is perfectly okay but that is valid for site on site condition now you are transporting this module and you will have mainly predominantly a load like this okay this is the reaction force coming from the bottom okay and this is a concentrated load not only that you will have a completely different bending moment diagram like for this what will happen now initially the bending moment diagram was like this okay this was the sagging part this support condition was hogging part okay now what will happen this is actually hogging and these are sagging okay so this is not zero actually so this is the bending moment diagram now okay so this is negative this is negative and this is positive right no just try to pause this video and try to understand yes you are correct actually now just let me erase okay so now the picture is something like this as you have applied this concentrated load it try to bend like this okay so here at the top this is tension it is compression and at the support at the top compression bottom tension that means here this is actually sagging and at the span it is hogging just reverse of the on site cases so based on this bending moment diagram you need to check your beam because now the span if the uh, let's say this beam is i section okay so at the span this bottom flange is under compressive load just reverse of this actual case so now this bottom flange is under compressive load and as the span is large as this span is large it is susceptible this bottom flange of the i section is susceptible to lateral torsional buckling okay not only that there is another criteria what is that you know that from this bottom there is a huge concentrated load and also from the top there is a loading like this okay so this particular zone is highly compressed so if this is the i section okay from the top you have some loading not only that from the bottom also you have a huge concentrated load so now this particular wave of this i section is acting like a column and it is very susceptible to buckling okay so for that what you have to do you may have to provide some stiffener at the single side or at the both side in this reactive location that is why in this picture you can see for particularly this bottom beam at the top beam there is no such stiffener also at the middle tire there is no stiffener but at this bottom beam you have provided multiple stiffener and i think now it is clear to you what are the purpose of these things these stiffeners not only provide the buckling uh, stiffness for this i section wave also they provide the lateral stability under compressive load which was occurred in this case here you know that at the span the bottom flange is actually under compressive load and it is susceptible to lateral torsional buckling okay so that's it if you love this video don't forget to share it